Why we love a political outsider? What do people want from politics? The promise of influencing the system without being drowned in bureaucracy. I should know. I was a too cool to care rock kid in Belgrade and then found myself at the center of the large nonviolent movement that helped topple the Serbian dictator Slobodan Milosevic. We all want the chance to let the old guard know that they are replaceable. That's why we love a political outsider. And globally, they are on the rise. Smaller UK parties like UKIP, the SNP and the Greens are doing their best to shake the establishment. Internationally, Syriza in Greece, Podemos in Spain and Beppe Grillo's five-star party in Italy have been challenging the status quo on a larger scale. Hey Greece, although Alexis Tsipras seems like an outsider, if you were watching carefully, he was the obvious choice. The nation was hungry for dramatic change and it's a feeling that's been rocking countries around the world over the last year. Just think about the Hong Kong protesters or Russell Brand. Who are these people? They are alternatives to the political norm. Public engagement in politics is being changed in a way we haven't seen for decades. Take the Scottish independence referendum. The turnout broke UK voting records because voters had a chance to create a real change. So how they have done it? Let's take Spain. Since 1982, the country has been governed by only two parties. Now, at less than five years old, Podemos are placing ahead of all of their competition. And how did they go from a nonviolent protest movement to a party able to engage in the political mainstream? Well, it learned from the mistakes of those that went before. One, they identified public grievances, things like corruption, forced evictions, and unemployment. Two, they elected an educated, respected leader. Three, they built a real grassroots support so that every single neighborhood has its own cell of the party. Elsewhere, there's Camila Vallejo, who was labeled the Chilean Che Guevara. She was elected to the parliament soon after leading the country's famous student movement. Political outsider movements connect us to the political aims that we really believe in. And they come without the baggage you get with many well-established groups. But while this might be the exciting, the question remains. Will these new movements succeed once they enter the halls of power, or they will find themselves unable to shape the system? In some cases, the backlash may have already begun. Some polls show that Podemos is not performing as well as expected. With the launch of several other small center-left parties in Spain, some analysts are now asking, has Podemos reached its peak? And one year into the Chile and protesters' terms, the reaction is mixed. They say that the older parliamentarians are not taking them seriously, while many of their former comrades in the streets have abandoned them, claiming that they've sold out. So, we know that today's outsiders are able to shake our political world. Whether or not they're able to shape it, it's yet to be seen. The bankers, economists and politicians who apparently saved the world from economic Armageddon in 2008 told us that this could never happen again. So, what's going on?